Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, April 18th, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing. Addy Elie Jr. Joining me is The Lock, Roger Pokorny. Yeet. Roger, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. For your second, third? Maybe fourth. Fourth time ever. It's been a minute. I mean, if you don't count like me coming in awkwardly in between and being like, this video game is okay, and then just leaving. Yeah. Like, that probably that one, was that one time you gave a game a one out of five. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a fun time. That was a, that really was a fun time. time. And that, that was, was a really nice time. one, because I was like a... In the moment, realizing, hey, I don't have anything good to say about this game. This is a one out of five. You know yeah. what I mean? That was art you saw there. That was Everyone, art. everyone saw art. That and day. that's like, finally, you gave our review scale meaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, finally. We see the one. We saw the fives yeah. a lot. So now we get it. Now we get it. Now we can finally give a game a one out of five. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Every day, every time it's like KFGD, usually it's like a Monday I'm on it. Uh, The last few times I've been on it, it's been like, okay, Sunday I'm nervous. But it's like, Mm. this week it's just like, okay, it's a Thursday. That's perfect. That's yeah. a perfect KFG. You're warmed day. up. I'm through warmed the week. up. Yeah, exactly. You're about to hit Friday, so you're in a good mood. Mm-hmm. People call it Friday Junior. Who says that? People at my last job. <laughs> is, that not, <laughs> is everybody not called that? You guys are a bunch of nerds. Yeah. That's what you are. Because then no, wait, they will call Friday Friday. God, you worked at such an office. <laughs> the last place oh, you yeah, Friday Thursday ju- was Friday Hump Junior. <laughs> um, I don't know if we said Somebody's got a much. case of the Mondays. I, I mean, I did have lots of cases on the Mondays at my, <laughs> my last job. But, you know, I miss it sometimes. We had yeah. free coffee. I guess we have free coffee here. But you had, like, Starbucks coffee. It was coffee. Starbucks coffee because yeah. I worked at Starbucks. Was it, like, actually nice? It was actual Starbucks coffee? Yeah, or, I mean, it was like they what resta- they make the Starbucks stuff with, but it was they had coffee machines, so people would make their own coffee. But they with, didn't have like a Starbucks in your office. Well, no, they they had that. Yes, they did. It was like underneath me. Was like it like free? you had to no, you it wasn't free. You had to okay, buy it. Well, but you get the discount. They have like the company discount. What's that fifteen? Like twenty? <laughs> sure, <laughs> maybe, maybe thirty. Oh yeah, a cup of coffee. If anybody is not what here, it should be. if anybody here works at Starbucks, what was the discount? It was enough to where I was like, you know what, man. I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to eat All double right. smoked bacon <laughs> cheddar and eggs every, every single, single day. day. Every single oh, day. Oh, dude. That was yeah, like, if it was 15, that would have been wild because Vans definitely had a better uh, I think it was 20. OMG, this in chat says the 20. discount was 20, I think. That sounds about right. And I had such an arc. Someone didn't see now. Naughty Biscotti says 30. Okay, I'm, well, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the, U, the, U, the U.S. Like well, United one free States drink of and America. 15%. I don't know what's happening What right is now? the discount? You work at Starbucks in the United States of America. That was such an arc for me because like, I've worked in multiple like restaurant jobs, right? Like one of the first jobs I had was to be a delivery driver at Pizza Hut. Yeah. And they would have a thing where once per shift, you can pay $1 to get like the personal pan pizza. Um, and like during every lunch, I'm doing that shit, right? Yeah. Like it's like, oh, a free pizza? Every lunch is Pizza Hut. And I love Pizza Hut, right? Like Pizza Hut. <laughs> we know that about you. Yeah. 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 Pizza Hut was such a childhood um, we, we, me and my family would go to pizza after church and it felt like we were going to the nice restaurant, mm. you know, it felt like we were doing something special. And yeah. so I always had pizza in the special place in my heart. And so when I was working as a delivery driver for pizza and I was eating my $1 pizzas, I always heard the stories of people that would work at restaurants and they would get tired of the food after a while. It's yeah, like, oh yeah, ask. you get tired of the taste, you get tired, you, like you get exhausted, you hate that restaurant afterwards. Yeah. To this day, I still love Pizza Hut. Wow, I what do you think that pi- is? Is it just you like pizza? Is cheap I love pizza. or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I, and I also have a high tolerance for eating the same thing over and over. Sure, again. yeah. yeah like, I get really bored real fast. I remember my, mm. my mom used to make me hot dogs every day for a month. Um, not every single, but like five days a week. Being punished? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like for just shit. Like I just wanted hot dogs, so she would just be like, "Okay, here's some hot." She would boil the hot dogs. Like she would just boil them from frozen. I would just eat these hot dogs, yeah. and then I just like could not look at a hot dog for the next like year. So like I get really like if you do that to me, like it's over for me for a year. So like I'm I'm happy. That, I'm happy that you didn't like if your first love didn't go away. Yeah, I, it's happened to me a bit with like microwavable f- foods. Sure. Like after a while, I had to take breaks from Lego waffles. I had to take breaks from like. You ever um, microwave those? Oh, you, you oh do yeah, microwave. no, that's my main thing. Oh, yeah, me too. Them. Yeah, we talked Okay, thank you. I do that as well. That, yeah. No, both of you are insane. I just love that the first thing you think of when you think of microwavable food is an Eggo waffle. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good You're one. Right. Cause that's Why what people the gave first me thing shit you for. think of? What I used to do is that I had these um, frozen, like, um, egg meal, like, meal, like Costco, like, frozen meals where I had, like, it was like egg, cheese, and like bacon bits and like yeah. sausage in it. It was nice. Fuck. And I would t- I would microwave that, right? It would be mm. nice and hot. And it was like a little skillet. And then I would get my uh, uh, Eggo waffles out of microwave. I would kind of like put them in there, like eat it like kind of like, like roti. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking awesome. That's, I mean, that's how you got to do it. That's what, like, to this day, I did yeah. that. Maybe like a month ago, where I, yeah, I, I finally I went and got some Eggo waffles because I did like my one Safeway trip a year. Yeah, <laughs> and like I was like, I'm gonna do groceries at Safeway as opposed to like the um, like market I have like around the corner for sure. me. That's like the local shop. But I was at Safeway and I was like, oh, let me get some microwavable food so I can like save more time and like you know pr- preserve more of these grocery store trips. Because like yeah. when you're eating real food, I feel like I'm at the grocery store every week. Yeah, but if I get these like 
super processed. Let me get the fucking purple bag of the eight burritos that are just frozen. Oh, in there. yeah. You know those eight burritos. Yeah. Like, I can go a month without look, grocery shopping. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm and you look those. at that sodium, you're like, ooh, that's 110% yeah. of my sodium. Okay. But it's well. like, hey, it's fine. You know, I'm yeah. saving money. So, <laughs> yeah, I literally did the same thing where I made some eggs, like scrambled eggs, and then I, made, I microwaved some Eggo waffles and I, like, fucking scooped that shit. Yeah. That's some syrup in there, too. That's my oh, fucking my fucking guy, bro. That's it was my fucking guy good. Right it was good. Look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? Who would have fucking thought? Yeah, after a while, I was like, I'm still, like, I'll still go back and eat and eat it i just need yeah. a little bit of a break that's yeah. the thing and when we eat pizza hut i think maybe after working there it was like okay let me do a little bit of a break but i get so excited when i when andy's like are we going to do some pizza hut and i'm like yeah we do. yeah we are yeah Let's i worked at quiznos got sick of it and then i was like okay well i want i want to go to quiznos again because it's been a while I, it's, it's, whatever and they, they all closed they all closed so it's like okay all well, of the quiznos i mean at least in my area in new okay. york but like i'm sure there's it's so hard to fucking find a quiz you know there's no red lobsters in san francisco that's fucked up. Did you see that Red Lobster is considering bankruptcy? So this is how this came up. I was, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was on a podcast last night and they brought up Red Lobster and how like, yeah, Red Lobster is closing because Jay-Z wasn't doing his thing. What? Yeah, because like, you know, <laughs> you Beyonce, can't. Beyonce was like, when you fuck me good, you take oh, my ass to Red Lobster. Okay, 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 so okay, very okay. obviously Jay-Z's not been putting it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's true. That's Beyonce's true. not been taking his, his ass to Red Lobster. So they've been, mm -hmm. have to file for bankruptcy. That's but funny. that's when I looked it up. I was because there the other people on the call were like, so, like, how, like, when was the last time you been to Red Lobster? I'm like, I don't think I've seen a Red Lobster. And they're like, what? And I'm like, dude, I don't think I've, I legitimately don't think I've seen a Red Lobster in years. And then I looked it up. Closest Red Lobster is in, like, San Bruno. Yeah. Which I've driven past. And I think about it. I, I drove past that one re uh, recently, too. Yeah. Yeah, because I went to BJ's. Have you been to BJ's? Yeah. Uh, it's fine. I liked it. It, it was my first time. I got a, we got, like, a, a Pazuki trio. Yeah. That comes with, like, three different Pazukis. But we got three, or no, we got two Pazuki trios. <laughs> so it was, like, a too Pazuki much. six. Six lit, six tup, six, six tuple. Lit. Yeah, pretty good. All I right. like the bazookies. Take me to BJ's. But Roger, enough about bazookies. I'll take you to BJ's one day. Uh, let's talk about today's stories, which include everybody's playing Fallout. L uh, Larian is working on two new games and more because this is kind of funny. Games Daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe if you love what we do support us with the kind of funny membership on patreon or youtube to get all of our shows ad free watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive show to be a part of the show some of your thoughts and opinions as youtube super chats as we go housekeeping for you moon studios the folks behind ori are launching their action rpg no rest for the wicked into early access today and we've partnered with them for a sponsored stream come see andy and mike delve into the gorgeous game get some twitch drops and maybe win a copy for yourself that's happening today at 11 a.m pacific time right after kind of funny games daily on youtube and on twitch and then a new kind of funny X cast is up on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and Paris talks about his time jumping back into Fallout 76 and they also talk more about whether or not we should tip video game developers and then also we're recording PS I love you XOXO later today on Patreon and it's the return of the one and only Game On Assist, a.k.a. Janet Garcia. Me and her are going to do a question bucket episode. Ooh. So you can write into kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y. Let me click that link real quick to make sure it works. Yeah, let's just make sure. Let's oh. just make sure. Yep. Ah, kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y with your questions to get them read on the show. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovisapian, and Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Factor, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be. The Rover Report. It's time for some news. We have seven stories today. A baker's dozen. There's somebody in chat that said, I feel like BJ's is the cheesecake factory of pubs, which is a very British thing to say, but also I think that's pro probably accurate. It was my sure. first time at BJ's and looking at the menu, I was like, this gives me cheesecake factory vibes. It's less good cheesecake factory. I'm going to be honest. Is it, I mean, it has more beers, how, which is nice, and I like it. How good is Cheesecake Factory, really? I mean, it just has so much shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's just so much. So it, you're saying it's good so as in, like... Outside of the cheesecake, though, what else is it really offering? It has some, like, some, like, fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Because you're, like you're measuring the quality of Cheesecake Factory based on, like... Quantity. Quantity. I'm, I'm, which I'm is doing, a fair I'm metric. doing the Drake. I'm doing the Drake. I'm like, hey... Or the J. Cole. I'm like, it's about the quantity, not the quality. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I feel you. Like, I, but I, I feel like the quality of the food is probably similar at BJ's. Sure. If not... Yeah, I've only I, so I only ate the pizza, like the mm. deep dish pizza, which isn't deep dish, by the way. Yeah, no. Detroit pizza. I think I talked about that, but like <laughs> I did talk about that a few weeks ago. I think, <laughs> but like it was really good Detroit style pizza. Sure, and the pizzukis were fire. Yeah, 
So right now I'm like, all right, Pazuki food quality, or sorry, BJ's food quality. Well, I just went. I went with uh, bless. Uh, sorry, uh, Greg and Tim and yeah. and Mike when we before we saw Raw um, down in San Jose, and we was like, oh shit, this is an experience. Like they were like hyping it up, mm. and when we got there, and I was like, this is just totally fine. You know what I mean? Same like thing you, with my you, friends. Yeah, just hyped it up way too much. I wonder if that's a Bay Area thing. Yeah, maybe where they just don't get enough quality. <laughs> Let's just go to Red Lobster. Fuck still, still, you know what I mean? dude, take my ass to Red Lobster, right? <laughs> I got you. Let's start off with story number one. Fallout 4 was Europe's best-selling game last week following the TV show's release. This is Chris Scolian at Video Games Chronicle. Fallout 4 was the best-selling game across Europe last week. According to GSD data, as reported by GamesIndustry.biz, the game saw sales increased by more than 7,500%. A lot of percents. <laughs> compared to the high. previous week, shooting it up to the top of the European charts. GSD's data tracks digital game sales in all of European markets, with the exception of some publishers such as Nintendo, and physical game sales across 15 major European countries. The enormous boost in sales for Fallout 4 is mainly down to a combination of the launch of the Fallout TV series on Amazon Prime Video and heavy discounts being applied to numerous Fallout games to mark the show's arrival. The show, which is exclusive to Amazon Prime Video, was released in full on April 12th to widespread critical acclaim with a current Rotten Tomatoes rating of 94% and an audience score of 88%. Three other Fallout games also made the European Top 10, with Fallout 76, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 3 coming in at numbers 8, 9, and 10 respectively. Wow. Hell I Receive was the second best selling game in Europe last week, followed by EA Sports FC 24. Cool. Are you so? Have you seen the Fallout show yet? Uh, I've seen probably four episodes. I think three episodes. How probably. are you enjoying it? Oh, I love it. I'm having a great time. I think it's to me in a real way, and this is gonna. I, I think it's it's genuine. Mm. I think it's a better adaptation or more some more impressive adaptation than Last of Us. In in mm. a re, in a sense that like Last of Us, I see it, I play the game, and I'm like, absolutely, this could be a movie, this could be a television show. I get it. Like this, th yeah. that is like a one to one. Thing. And of course, they expanded on it. They made it a better product, especially with the Bill episode and all the different characters. But for me, Fallout, it's like, oh, you guys, you guys were in your back. You guys knew, you guys were all to the littlest of details. You played these games. You understand the language of Fallout. And I, I was just so impressed by the smallest of things in the background, the little references to things like, to me, that that's what makes this adaptation so far, only four yeah. episodes in, so impressive. Well, I will say, I, in my opinion, I think it only gets better as it goes, yeah. right? Like you say you're four episodes in. For me, that's where I that's where it locked in and only got better from there. Um, and it's fun seeing everybody like get the chance to watch it and now like be in the place where uh, you know, I was talking to, I think it was Barrett that was like, dude, I'm love, I'm liking like all the episodes so far and like plenty of people that are like, yo, from the get go, this thing is great, like yeah. all the way through, right? And like, yeah, I think that speaks volumes. You know, I think if we're comparing to Last of Us, I would say it is the more fun adaptation and more interesting adaptation, just from the sense of. You're right. Like it's new. La it's new. Last of Us yeah. was a story that we already knew. I'm watch watching the Last of Us TV show. I also like drawing so many comparisons to the game in the way where I'm like, okay, but like you know, I like the game's Joel better, but I like how they tackle yeah. Bill better in the TV show. Oh, but like you know, the production of the TV show is great, but also like I like this and the like. The game is so cinematic already that it feels like it is. All right, I'm retreading a lot of the same steps in a way that they're able to package it up and put it out as a prestige TV show for the people that maybe didn't play the game or the people that just want to re-experience it with sure. um, uh, Pedro Pascal playing as Joel. Um, but like, you know, I think with Fallout, it's the fact that you don't know what to expect. And it is, I think it's more fun based on how they're tackling the genre of it. Because this is the thing I've talked about for years that I am more interested in adaptations of like gaming worlds as opposed to like linear stories uh, we talk about the metal gear solid movie coming someday and i'm like cool i love metal gear solid i'll take anything that's metal gear solid i'm sure that'll be great whenever it comes through but i'm not as excited about the idea because i have the games and like the games are already super cinematic yeah. and i'm already getting that experience out of there whereas uh, I, I remember having a conversation about destiny and like how i think if you made a destiny movie and had to be an original story like i think that could be exciting right or you take any game that is more so about the world than it is even about the individual characters i think that is an exciting prospect because you get to deliver new stories but then also you know explore those things about the world that truly make that world feel like a living breathing place like i think fallout for me works so well because they are tackling a lot of the themes in in fallout that work so well but recontextualizing them in a way where it's like okay you know fallout's about weird like capitalism like it's about yeah. what you like the different ways people might tackle an apocalypse in a wasteland it's about 
um like this weird steampunky aesthetic that is like you know the rusted like vaults but then also just the idealism of inside the vaults but also like the fucked up mad max nature of the raiders and the brotherhood of steel and what that does in terms of like military power but like this um uh almost like this american exceptionalism that that like they're imbued with there's so much going on and all the stuff persists through the games but the thing that makes the game special is that i think the way fallout 3 fallout new vegas and fallout 4 and i'm sure fallout 1 and 2 the way that all those things handle what fallout is it's all similar but they have their own takes on it and the show does such a good job of hey we know what fallout is but here's our take on the world and i think it is i I think they knock it out the park with the way they do it yeah and the fallout show works so well because the games at the very least you you are experiencing it in in different ways right like when i play fallout 4 it's probably a little bit different than the way you play fallout 4 right so like i love seeing the way that uh the creators jonathan nolan and uh, the the rest of the creators were able to take this world and imbue it with so much energy and so much of them and also connect it to the games and the universe and it, it feels it feels different but it feels like some somewhere i've been before in, yeah. in a really in a really genuine way um it, yeah i'm just i'm just blown away by every single moment of it um yeah the, 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 the thing that i'm loving the most out of all of this and i was trying to figure out how to title this episode because like i right now i have it, it like headlined as fallout is exciting again but i almost want to yeah. like headline it as like fallout is is fun again right like i i it, like we talked about how how much longer we have to wait until a fallout 5 right like i don't are we gonna am i gonna see that in my gaming lifetime <laughs> it's gonna be a decade yeah. am i gonna be 40 by the time i'm playing fallout 5 like i i would hope not but like that seems what uh, like what things are pointing to but the fact that you know it's it feels like fallout is a franchise that is so cool and special and like a lot of people really really like fallout but it's almost like when we talk about persona 3 <laughs> with barrett and barrett's talking about how like yeah there's not really an ideal persona version of persona 3 when like mm. people ask how do i play persona 3 falls had this well, weird now thing. now it's reload now it's reload now that they're putting out the dlc yeah. but falls had this weird thing where fallout 76 sucked at launch and it's a multiplayer co-op like this different type of fall game it's not the kind of fall game i would recommend to people that want to see yeah. what fall is all about but that's the latest release and it's there for you if you want it fallout 4 i would say is a great game but it's also I think in a lot of people's minds, not the peak of Fallout, and it's still a decade old, right? Sure. Like, even if it is, all right, cool, it's not the best Fallout game. I, I think if you had the caveat of, but it just came out, and so it's modernized and all the shit, it'd be one thing. But it's still 10 years old, which puts it in this dated place. But then there is Fallout 3, which is even older, but, like, still a special game. But then there's New Vegas, which is kind of the fan favorite, but it's also super old at this point. It feels old to play. Um, and when we're talking about how long, like, if we're calling New Vegas the last time Fallout was, like, on top of the world, even though New Vegas kind of, like, had this cult classic feel, I think, when it launched. That was, what, 2011, 2010? Like, chat, correct correct me on the year New Vegas came out. But that was over a decade ago. And as somebody who loves Fallout, you know, you look at it and it's like, damn it's been a while since fallout has felt like this for me and i'm yeah. glad that we're at this place where fallout feels exciting and fun and new again and and fallout always felt like when you see i think that's the excitement behind uh, new vegas and the reason why it is a huge uh, fan favorite is because we took a franchise that was able to just okay we're, we have fallout 3 we have fallout 4 but then we're able to just go off and do it our own thing with a different studio right it always mm. felt like it had that capabilities because of the vaults right of because you can just go anywhere in the in the country in the world and make something so special so to see fallout the show basically correct correctly do that right just yeah. be hey we're going to go Again, we're going to do another city. We're just going to make a whole thing that's not connected. It's connected, but it's not connected to anything else. And we're just going to have that go. Um, it's it's great to see. And I hope, hope again, last time we had a KFGD together, we talked about this. I hope that we see another studio fill in the gap. Yeah. I just, you wish. You Dude, wish, you yeah. hope. You wish that they that they figure out something, even if it's a small, even if it's a, diff, if it's a different type of game, right? Like, mm-hmm. I would be totally you fall fine shelter with something numbers else. are up also exactly which is a great game yeah it's a great game but like even if it isn't just a mobile game even if it is something where it's like a small little indie game that's a story-based thing right like there's there's so much w- excitement there for the fallout ip that you can parlay that into a lot of different types of games and i think we're just scratching the surface right yeah now. yeah i'm very excited to see where this goes speaking of new vegas story mm-hmm. number two todd howard confirms new vegas is in fact still canon um i am not gonna go, go into spoilers about the Please show don't. here i removed the spoilers from <laughs> from the article uh but this is written by moises Tavares, oh, the homie yo. over at kotaku this is the first time i'm pulling a moises article which is exciting that's exciting yeah history 
Amazon's Fallout TV series has made waves since it dropped last week, mostly due to the quality of the work. Fallout's one of the best video game adaptations we've gotten and one that enhances the series greatly. It also is situated at the very end of the known timeline of the games, serving as sort of a sequel to the series while Bethesda works on Starfield and Elder Scrolls VI. <laughs> However, there's a contingent of fans who are less than pleased with the implications of some of the events of Fallout, specifically what they perceived as retconning the beloved Fallout New Vegas. Now, people involved with the show have already come forward to refute the belief that it erases New Vegas, and Todd Howard, who largely led development on the Fallout series since Fallout 3 in 2008, is the latest to clear things up once and for all. In a conversation with IGN, Howard stated, quote, there might be a little bit of confusion in some places, but everything that happened in the previous games, including New Vegas, happened. We're careful hmm. about, we're very careful about that, end quote. There, are you all happy now? I'm excited to finish the show. I'm excited to see what that means. Yeah. That's interesting. Once you get further, it's like very off, so okay. like, like kind of what they're pointing to, even though I missed it, because like yeah. I didn't play all the way through New Vegas sure. yet. And so like I saw people online talking about it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I saw the, the back and forth and the arguments of people being like, damn, but that's the hate <laughs> New Vegas, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, like yeah. the retconning and all yeah, this shit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I again, I removed parts of the article to avoid spoilers, but I think the fact that these games all don't, all don't take place at the same exact time, like it's, I think it's all of them might be within a 100 or 200 year span of oh, each wow. other. Like okay. they're not, like they're, they are kind of spread out, but they're also not that spread out because I think some of them are like only like a decade apart or yeah. so. Um, I think that gives you some leeway to go, oh, but things have happened in this world. Like yeah. things have either moved on or things haven't gotten to where there are yet, right? Like I think you have the leeway to do some of that stuff. But yeah. I love that they're acknowledging it because even with, to the people that are like, but that's a haste New Vegas. I don't even like, I don't even refute that because yeah. they might. <laughs> I feel like they don't talk about New Vegas that much. Yeah. Um, like they're it may be a little bit of salt, you know? Or yeah, a little yeah. bit. They know how to make bit. an RPG. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think... I'm glad that they're at the very least acknowledging acknowledging it and going, no, 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 it's canon. We thought about that. Yeah. That, for me, makes me feel good. Yeah, it's uh, seeing the interviews with Todd and, like, it seems like they're all, they very much care about the things that they're putting in this game, specifically for the canon aspect of it, which is yeah, cool to see. It's Hell cool yeah. to see. Bear, what's up? Uh, I haven't played all the way through New Vegas, but I, I do know, like, kind of end game stuff and chat reminded me of, like, it's also a game with, like, a, few different endings so like yeah. I, I feel like there's maybe some stuff with like the ending new, uh, of new vegas that people are like trying to draw from like what the show is trying to erase where it's like mm -hmm. i don't know there's six different endings like uh, maybe one of them isn't canon who the fuck cares and then my other takeaway we need to stop giving a shit about canon we need to stop. What? I mean, why do you say that? You're no, a Star Wars we fan. Need to fuck <laughs> I mean, and they gave. They saying. stopped giving a shit. For I, a I'm a child of Star Wars, man, and like I'm a child of like who grew up in like the fucking really cool weird era where there was like way too many books and like none of it like really tracked with each other and shit. We're also a generation just broken by fucking Marvel movies. I, I we just. Uh, yeah, when you can canon? be upset, you can be like, oh man, like this feels like a New Vegas racer, but like the amount of outcry about the New Vegas thing, it just, it seems silly to me. I feel like canon, I get excited, but I'm also somebody who, I never get that deep into canon, like when yeah. I'm never the kind of person that is that knows all the, like the smallest details about like a very specific fiction of thing, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I appreciate continuity and I appreciate like references and all that stuff, but I think, yeah, having like a good consistent canon makes that stuff even cooler yeah. when you think when like when it feels like the writers have thought about the thought ahead about these things yeah i'm like I, it's a 50 50 situation for me right where it's like some things i care very much about canon right fucking suicide squad batman it's like fucking fuck you know what i mean like that oh, that yeah. like that stuff pisses me off but then i like fallout to me it's like this could this whole show could have just been an alternate universe type situation and i would have been like yeah totally fine whatever like i, I, I think those are two different things that sure. i would argue is because like the Suicide Squad situation wasn't, like, a problem of canon. It was a problem of, like, poor writing, yeah. I would say, you know? And I don't know. It's just... If if a thing connects to you in, like, a... <clears throat> whether it's a world or characters or storytelling, that's all that should, that should matter. Yeah. You know? yeah. I will say I think canon matters to, like, some IPs more than others. Yeah. Like, Fallout canon, I don't care about as much. No. Granted... If it is a thing, I, I would, it's tough, right? Fallout's such a weird one because it is decision driven, and the characters in Fallout, at least the main characters you're playing as, they're characters, but they're not really they're your avatar as well. I saw, I think last week, there was somebody who's either from Bethesda or there's somebody that worked on Fallout that was trying to say that the main character from Fallout 4 
was also this character that appeared in this cut scene in Fallout 2 or 1. Wow. And then people were like, but if that's true, that means he, that means he's a war criminal. Yeah. And he was like, never mind, never mind, never mind. And it's like, that's the part where it's like, okay, well, who cares about that, right? Yeah. Like, Fallout canon in that way of, oh, this character was doing this. I don't think that matters as much as opposed to like, you know, if, and this isn't a spoiler for the show because we all know the show takes place in California, but if, say, Fallout Season 3 you end up in the capital wasteland and Metaton is still there. Yeah. I could see that being like a, huh, interesting. Yeah. You all made a choice here. And like, I think that could be cool depending on how you did it. Like if you go to the capital wasteland and Metaton is fucking demolished, I feel like that's a cool thing. I think that's really cool for Canon because yeah. that's the thing that a lot of players remember. And a lot of players did, right? Like that was the evil thing to do if you did that. But also, that was a that was a decision that is memefied that people look back at as like yo it's crazy that you could destroy Metaton if you want to if that was what the canon was and uh, or if you go to to Capital Wasteland and that's what they chose as the canon I think that's a fascinating thing to yeah. do with that but that's the kind of thing that's the kind of thing and I'd then want people would be mad at that right because they're be like well that's not my ending yeah. or whatever but then it's like but like to me that it's like the, the branches of the multiverse right and like, for me that's, that's how that is, you that's cool that's how you play with Fallout canon yeah right like I don't really care about. Oh, like the I can't even think of like characters' names in Fall. In fall. Um, what's the homie Nick Valentine? If you're into Nick Valentine and he's up to some different shit in the show, yeah, it's like cool. Like okay, yeah. cool. Like I I I feel like there are the bigger things in the Fallout universe that might matter yeah, a bit it's, more, it's but I don't the, really care about a lot of the finer details. To me, it's like the vibe of the world, right? Like if you get the vibe of the world wrong for Fallout, that's the cardinal sin. I like think I, everything else around it is is not great. People are correcting you. Me, yeah, Megaton. Sorry, Megaton is the fucking Undertale character. <laughs> a Megaton. It's close <laughs> enough. We also see Megatron today. Megatron. Did you see that trailer? It looks fine. It's I, totally fine. It's definitely not what I thought it was going to be. No. It's weird. It's like very like, you know, can't be. Very, <laughs> like, yeah, kiddie, yeah very kitty. It's fine though. It's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, I'm happy fall. It's exciting again. Me I'm happy we're here. Did yeah. you play the fall games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played uh, New Vegas. I didn't finish it. Same with you. And then mm. I played Fallout 4, which I really, really dug. Yeah. I played that to the completion. I, I love that Fallout awesome. 4. Yeah, I, I, I understand people don't like it as much as the other ones. But like for me, like that it's being one of the one that, that like, I played, I'm like, fuck yeah, that game rules. Like Looking back at Fallout 4, I get why people... Because also, like, I didn't fuck with like, the building. I also liked the voice acting. I'm going to be honest. I liked it. I liked being, I didn't I, mind it. I liked my character talking to people. Like I was I was not taken aback by it. Right. For me, it was, it was the crafting and like the building stuff sure. where I'm like, okay, this is a bit much for me. Yeah. But you can just ignore that shit. Yeah. And so I I look back at Fallout 4 very fondly. I had a really good time with Fallout 4. But I'm also like, it. I get why people hate on it. But yeah. I also think because of that, it's a bit... I don't want to say underrated. Maybe it is a little bit underrated. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. A little bit. You know what's not underrated? Baldur's Gate 3. But before we talk about it, I want to tell you about something else that's underrated. Patreon.com slash kind of funny and YouTube.com slash kind of funny games where you can go and get the kind of funny membership, which allows you to get shows ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been in the new studio, and you can too. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. And we're back with story number three. Baldur's Gate 3 dev is working on two new games based on his own IP. This is Kenneth Shepard at Kotaku. Larian Studios has given a few details on what it's up to after Baldur's Gate 3 and its projects, plural. The team is apparently working on two new games after the success of its Dungeons & Dragons RPG last year. In a developer's update on Steam, Larian detailed some of the new content coming in Baldur's Gate 3's 7th patch, including an expansion and conclusion for the Evil Route. But it also divulged a few details about what else it's working on. 
As the studios already said, it's not working on a big expansion or DLC for the, for the game, nor is it working on a fourth game set in the Wizards of the Coast universe. Instead, the team is looking to work on its own IP, and it has two games in the works. These projects are still in the early days, but Larian says the development sensibilities that made Baldur's Gate 3 such a hit are still in place. Quote, I don't know if we're going to pull it off, but looking at our narrative, <laughs> visual, <laughs> can you imagine? I love it. I love there's, the only a, there's only a 50% chance this is actually yeah. successful. We're, we might fuck this up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but looking at our narrative, visual, and gameplay plans, I think what we're working on now will be our best work ever, CEO Sven Vink said in the post. Quote, I get excited like a kid watching the key imagery, uh, watching, uh, want to show it to everyone now and grumble in frustration at having to wait until it's actually all working. Yes, it's hype, but it's hype because it really looks and feels good, end quote. Lit. While the prospect of a new IP is exciting, there's also the possibility one or both could be a new game in the Divinity series, following 2017's wonderful Divinity Original Sin 2. In an interview with IGN in March, Vink didn't confirm or deny the possibility of a new game in its long-running series, but said that its next project would be, quote, different than what you think it is, end quote, while still familiar. Perhaps it'll be a new approach in the, in the same setting, or whatever's next could be inspired by those games without being set in the same universe cool oh yeah that's awesome my guess is you do i think they do a divi- a new divinity original sin game yeah and then a new ip that is a different genre yeah oh I, a still, different genre yeah we kind of talked about this yesterday before yeah. this news broke but like i was thinking maybe you do something in sci-fi or in space or oh, something okay, that is gotcha. like gotcha but like stuff. the same type of game though. same type of game gotcha okay yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah, a good yeah. clarification yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i still think they make another computer no RPG that's or i think that's the right move yeah, yeah i think that's that's where my head's at this is awesome i it's cool that like I mean, I, I'm not super deep into the community, but it seems like the vibes are like, you do you, Larian. Like, you yeah. do yeah. Like, I, sure, we would love you to come back for Baldur's Gate 4, but like, you know, it's cool that you guys are able to go off and just make your own shit with your own IP and like probably keep a lot more of that money <laughs> in yeah. your pocket. Like, that's, it's super cool to see them being so open about their next two games now and also with all the updates. That's the part that's kind of hidden in this. It's mm-hmm. like, that's, that's dope. I, I still need to go back and play and finish Baldur's Gate, but like, I'm sure, do, Dude, I'm sure a lot of y'all in the, all the audience need to do that. I dream about doing that. I think the only way I'll actually like finish Baldur's Gate is if I finally turn the game to easy. <laughs> sure. Because yeah. I am so... It's, I've never been so upset to be so bad at a game because I love Baldur's Gate 3 so much, yeah. but I just struggle so hard when it comes to like getting into battle sequences. And I, I'm so stubborn about turning down difficulty but i think if i the only way for me to actually play through it is if i turn it to easy and just like steamroll some of these for, battles for me it's weird because like i was playing with with andy and mike and i was having such a good time co-op and then we stopped because we're doing a bunch of other things and now it's like we're never gonna go back to it mm-hmm. so i'm like i want to play with somebody else like to me that is the you defin- don't want to play single player that is the definitive way to play was with, at least with me was like role playing with my friends so mm-hmm. it's like now going back to single player it's like i guess i could do this but that's like less fun i'm sure it is mm. not less fun but at least it would feel like that initially like being on stream going like ah, i'm nick scarpino like that yeah that is fun that's to, a that, fun way to do it yeah and it's like that's like the funnest way and now i have to go back and be like okay i'm gonna be silent in my room just clicking <laughs> clicking my yeah. fucking mouse and it's like uh, i guess yeah Gosh. i i'm fascinated by what they decide to do um i do wonder if they make if they make two big rpgs right because like yeah. two games for larian like working on on them like They're big simultaneously studio, they are a big studio, studio, but they make some big games, yeah. right? So, like, I don't know if they, I don't know if they have the capability to make two big RPGs at the same time. So, I yeah. wonder if it is maybe they do make a new Divinity, and then the other game is like a different genre, or maybe it's smaller games. <laughs> what if they have like a Gwent style game in Divinity, and they just make a full game? <laughs> <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like already, they, 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 they make Queen's Blood. Up the numbers, they're like, yeah, we got two games, <laughs> two games. It's like one of them is Queen's Blood. Yeah. Um, we, talk, we just got done talking about Fallout and how we're not going to get Fallout in forever. I think it'd be really cool if Larian decided to make a Fallout. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. That'd be sick. Because, like, uh, I, again, I don't... But, but, that's but the, here's the thing, though. IP here's the is issue, weird. Though. What's that? We, we did hear, the, uh, at least the, it was the CEO, the head, the founder, talking yeah. about Game Pass. If they made a Fallout game, it would be on Game Pass. It would be on Game Pass. And also, I think they said original IP in here in the, in yeah, the exactly. story, too. But that, yeah. that would be cool, though. That would be cool. Imagine that. I'm trying to find where they said IP. They definitely said IP in the story. So, like, it's not going to be a Fallout. No. But I would love it to be I want a them, throwback to Fallout 1 and 2. I want them to do their own thing. Like, I want, I want a full-on new IP from them. I think that would be, that'd be a really cool. Because, like, at least for me a little bit, like, the idea of Baldur's Gate 3 is just... Uh, the, the 3 is a little intimidating. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, when you see that to maybe some people, it's just like, oh, that's... that's, that's there's three games that maybe... Oh, two games that I'm missing here. So, I like the idea of them just going off and doing their own thing. Yeah. I'm Okay. I, I'm trying to... I'm trying to find in the article the IP because in the article it says that it's new IP, 
Yeah. Which could mean like new IP or just like a different IP. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like new as in it is not Baldur's Gate, which maybe could open the door to Fallout, but I'm trying not to hope because sure. I don't know. No, you don't, don't, don't want to get would. the head kit. No, don't I don't get think the they would. Enough, I'll, I'll get too excited and then I'll be disappointed when they're like, no, we're working on like a new space. Someone said Warhammer game. in the chat. Imagine that. But like Warhammer already has a series, like, like a series. But like what if what if what if they did one? You know what I mean? <laughs> but then what's the other studio going to do that already makes the Warhammer games? Uh, they, they make a lot of games. They make a lot of Warhammer games. Everybody's been saying Kotor for a long time for them. Yeah, that'd be the dream. That'd be cool. That'd that's be that's dream. too good. Almost. I, here's good. here's we what else it. we don't. We really don't. I think the thing with Larian is that they're so talented with studio, and I think they built em- enough cachet to where if they put out their own original IP. Like a new original IP, I should say, that's gonna take off and become yes. so successful. So I think they're gonna go that route as opposed as to going, should. hey, let's pay Marvel and uh, or not Marvel, but yeah, it's Disney. Let's play Disney so we can make a yeah, Star 40% Wars forty percent or whatever. Forty percent, yeah. yeah. Drop and give me fifty. <laughs> <laughs> let's pay Disney or let's play as let's pay Xbox and like yeah. have that split no, with Xbox. That. It's like they're an independent no. studio, and they just made one of the best games of all time. They can make do any new IP the game and make all that money. And people are gonna, people are gonna, people are anticipating it. And it's we, like Super Giant, where it's like, yeah. oh, whatever you make now, we're gonna play it. Exactly. And and we're at the point now where everyone's like, hey, I'm, I want new IPs. We want new IPs. Boom. We we have we have a new that, IP. that has the ability to do that. And they're whatever they do. You're so right. They it will be the biggest thing in the universe. Yeah. So yeah, please make something love, new that you own 100. Let, let me tell you, space exploration, um, swords, but like instead of steel, Whoa. it's lasers. Like a sword with a laser and like maybe like magic powers. Like if you like push somebody from over here across the room, they still feel it and fly off. Or like you squeeze your hand and they start choking. Oh, that's an interesting one. So yeah. I was thinking like maybe if we had a gun and it had a chainsaw on the underneath it, right? And you cut like aliens in half. But those aliens come from the ground. Gears of War. Imagine they did a I was thinking Dead Space. <laughs> <laughs> I was going Dead Space or Helldivers 2. I couldn't tell which. You didn't um, think Gears of War? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, you know, it's Dead Space. Cause like, hear me out. You know, you go to space and there's you're in a space station. What if they make zombies. Dead Space too? Finally, <laughs> they, they remake it. They're like, finally. fuck it, we're done with making dope ass finally. games. We're just gonna remake the older ones. Finally, let's move on. Story number four: Nintendo emulator Delta launches on the App Store. This is Taylor Lyles at IGN. After Apple loosened its policies on allowing retro game emulators, developer uh, Riley Testut uh, launched a new free emulator on the App Store yesterday, offering support for several Nintendo consoles from yesteryear. In a blog post, Testut revealed uh, Delta serves as a successor to GBA for iOS, providing support for not just Game Boy games, but also NES, Sega Genesis, SNES, N64, wow. and even the Nintendo DS. Holy shit. More interestingly, uh, Testut teased that it would support more emulators on the App Store listing, but did not specify which emulators exactly. The app is free to download in Apple's official stores worldwide, including the United States. Those in the EU can download it through Alt Store Pal, <laughs> yep. a third-party marketplace released yesterday thanks to the EU's Digital Markets Act, uh, which allows third-party app stores to be hosted within the App Store. Hell yeah, bro. I mean, this is cool. It's cool. It's 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 wild to me because I was talking to my brother about this last night. He looked at me and said, Roger, are you ever going back to uh, Apple? Are you going back to iPhone ever? And I'm like, no, because I want to be able to do what the fuck I want on my phone. I like being able to sideload apps. I like being able to yeah. have emulators, allegedly, whatever I want to yeah. do. I mean, emulators so, aren't illegal, so you can have all emulators. No, 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 but I'm saying, like, you know. It's the ROMs are getting sure, you in trouble. Sure, 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 fine. Which we would never do such fine. a thing. Yeah, legally, I have mm-hmm. emulators, but whatever. I have to ROM in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Only ROM I know is the vacuous spider. <laughs> Facts. The Bloodborne reference. That's, yeah. I didn't get it, but, like, I was trying Somebody to Somebody out there is going to I was like yes-handing, you know what I mean? But I, I'm, this is exciting to me, because I know... Uh, I know how like desperately iPhone users and Apple users have needed this for so long. Dude, it's crazy that iPhone users ha- haven't had this forever. Yeah, I, I my my girlfriend has like downloaded like the weirdest shadiest apps in order to make this happen, so she mm-hmm. can play Hello Kitty allegedly on uh, from the Game Boy Advance on her iPhone, and it just works sometimes. So like this is great that this not only has SNES, Sega Genesis, NES, Game Boy, N sixty four. And uh, Nintendo DS, like that is a wild amount in one emulator. Like, good on them that, for making yeah. that happen. That is crazy shit. That's fucking awesome. Uh, and it brings me back to high school where 
I would, I had, um, it was like one of my first Android phones. It was the Samsung Moment that had a slide out keyboard. Oh, it's so sick. Yeah, I, I, God, I, I so miss cool. it so you're much. You're so fucking cool, they, st- they stopped making sli- like, the slide out keyboard so quickly I, after that. I want it to. Because the iPhone took over and people were like, okay, well, no, like we're going to do only touchscreen. I loved the, the slide out keyboard. That was, that was a moment bless. Was. That was so good. I think that might have been my last uh, non-iPhone phone that I had was something very similar. If they made a Samsung Galaxy. I may or Galaxy, may not have uh, played Mario 64 on it. And that's the thing. Allegedly. Is I played so many classic games. I caught up in so many games. Um, allegedly, let's <laughs> the, drop the allegedly okay. in the back in the back of my English class in it's high school. Bit. I'm back there playing Earthbound. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back there playing um, like not Fire to Fire Red. I'm yeah. playing uh, yeah, not listening to anything. I'm playing um, Kuru Kuru Kururin. I don't know if you sure. know that one yeah. uh, for Game Boy Advanced. I'm just I'm playing mad games. Yeah. Um, I played so many games in the back of class. Yeah. I in college I had an N64 emulator on my laptop and in like when I when I uh, in the back of like my big lecture hall, right? I'm back there playing tre- Tetris. Fuck yeah. The new Tetris for the N64. God. Oh, I thought you were gonna name more Tetrises. I thought you were, I thought you were saying Tetris, no. new Tetris, and then you were gonna be like Hatris. <laughs> I mean, I tried Tetrisphere, I didn't like it that much. Yeah, Tetris. I was back fun. there playing Bio Freaks. <laughs> I, I remember playing on my Android phone. This is why, like, again, I can't go back to iPhone. No hate, no hate, but like hate. I, I couldn't go back to iPhone at that time because I was playing fucking when I was a kid, uh, Ninja Gaiden on like on the NES on my phone, and I was like, this is so sick. And then like I picked up, a, I had an iPhone four at the time, and I was just like, oh, let me try that. It's like, oh, I can't can't do that. I have to jailbreak it. You gotta get yeah. City on that bitch. Oh, Miss Cydia. Miss Go to jail for that. Miss Cydia. Miss Cydia. Yeah, because um, cool. shout out all the iPhone users. <laughs> have fun playing yeah. Mario 3. <laughs> have sure. a blast out there. Happy for you. Uh, story number five EA's Black Panther appears to be an open world sandbox based game on, uh, or sorry, it's an open world sandbox based on a job posting. I'm pulling from Michael Kripe at IGN. EA's upcoming Black Panther game will be an open world experience, according to a new job listing from the company. The job post calls to fill a senior sandbox designer role for the recently established Cliffhanger Games. Most details about its mysterious Black Panther project have been kept secret since its announcement last year. However, the listing teases that applicants should expect to be instrumental in designing the pop- uh, the, uh, designing and populating encounters, systems, and gameplay within a dynamic and evolving open world should they land the position. It's a role that will help Cliffhanger, which includes talent from Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor, expand the Marvel hero by creating an open-world experience. The listing says that successful applicants will help create a sandbox, will help create sandbox elements that mix uh, with the narrative and gameplay objectives without compromising immersion. Additional details promise potential features like urban crowds and wildlife in what is described as a living, breathing game world. One bullet point teases how Cliffhanger will implement linear missions within the open world, quote, partner with the design team to integrate sandbox dynamics into the mission design, facilitating seamless transitions between structured missions and open world exploration. EA has declined to comment. We kind of already knew this, but it was based on like leaks and reports. This is the first time I believe that we've gotten like any quote unquote official, but like word coming from EA that this might be an open world. Yeah. Black Panther game and the what is it the the Captain America Black Panther game what's that name of the game 1943 Rise of Hydra awful 1942 name. awful name awful name I was one so of the, close I one was of the worst off. names humanly possible you can yeah, make like, for a game with Captain America and Black Panther yeah right <laughs> it's, just it's, insane. Insane. it's literally, it's literally <laughs> just call it Black Panther and Captain America <laughs> wild shit but like whatever um so that game is a linear game right yeah we know that for a fact so this is cool that this is scratching that itch of you're exploring wakanda you're running around like that's that's awesome and playing a little bit of the avengers dlc which uh with black panther was cool in the beginning of like running around jumping like that's awesome like i'm, I'm excited for that i'm excited for yeah. this is like one of the few times where it's like oh there's an open world sandbox game and i'm like oh shit i'm actually it's, excited for this I, <laughs> like that's I, a cool idea i'm excited for both of the games yeah it is crazy that ea or not ea that uh disney and marvel greenlit both of these games sure. at the same time like big triple a games heavily featuring black panther as a main playable character that's wild and i don't know if that's unprecedented like it feels mm-hmm. like something that's unprecedented right because there's a, there could be a lot of confusion there um that said i think both approaches are really fascinating and really exciting right yeah. amy hennig being able to work on a linear hey this is about black panther and Captain america and that back and forth and then also you have a couple other characters that i believe are playable as well um that is super exciting and when we saw that demo from gdc where you get like the 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 performance of the Black Panther I forget the the actor kind of funny dot com so you're wrong but like him being like you know that shield doesn't belong to you like it looks so fucking good and I cannot wait for it this open world one 
I think sounds exciting. I want to see a trailer, right? Yeah. Like I want to see what it looks like in motion. If they're able to capture in the way that when we're playing Spider-Man from Insomniac, how good the momentum feels when you're running on walls, when you're swinging through New York, when you're navigating through the world, where you're using your wingsuit. If they're able to capture that level of movement, but as that Black Panther, I don't know what that looks like, but I think you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing an open world game as Black Panther, like I'm sure there might be wall running too, but like, yeah. you know, what, this, what does sprinting feel like, right? Like what does parkour feel yeah. like? Um, are you having those elements? Yeah. <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I like on a mount? Am I riding a horse? <laughs> like, like, how do you go about? A big panther. Am I riding a dude? That'd be fucking insane. That'd be lit, bro. That, like a spectral uh, panther. Like it's like from like uh yeah it's, it's, like, yeah. it's like a ghost panther or whatever you're flying. That's cool. I mean when you put it like that. I don't know if I want that, but at the same time I'm like, yo, <laughs> honestly, let's, let's yeah, let's see what that I'm looks like. I'm excited because like I I mean Wakanda is just the coolest in the world. Like it's the coolest dude, place in the just, world. Honestly, like, that's so, the cooler thing about it. Yeah, it's just it would be awesome to walk around just the city, like the marketplaces of Wakanda, and then be like, okay, now I'm gonna go out into the into the forest, right? Like I'm gonna go and hunt things. Like that's so sick. And that's what I imagine the the pitches were like in yeah. the Disney like executives room, where John Drake <laughs> like, has two meetings back to back, and he sits with Amy Hennig, and he and Amy Hennig's like. Hey, this is the story I got. It's yeah. Captain America. It's Black Panther. It's this. It's yeah. linear. It's and it's not like, in Wakanda. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it feels like Uncharted and all this stuff. And John and John Drake is like, yes, we have to make this. And the next day, EA comes through and EA is like, yo, we're going to make a studio. They make an open world game. And an open world is going to be Wakanda. And John Drake is like, fuck. But well, we just we just greenlit a black panther game but, but like, this also sounds cool so like yeah just make them both we'll be we'll make yeah. them both like i wonder what those pitches were like because it's crazy that again both these it's games like are being the made prince of persia's situation that's like happening this year yeah you know? right and like, like even, with, even with that it's like okay well those are yeah prince of persia i guess that is yeah it's a very it's a very similar thing yeah and i feel like it might take away from it but i think early access might be the way that they're also, getting around it this black panther game i'm assuming is not coming out in the next two years right i mean if they're hiring for an open world designer right like this is probably it might be end of the out. generation video game probably. that you would see maybe cross generation for the next one if you had if i had to predict i'll say either 2025 or 2026 for the yeah. amy hennig black panther Captain america game and then like yeah i'll say even 2027 yeah for the ea one but like 2026 and 2027 to get two very different black sure. Panther games yeah. that's still pretty close to each other yeah um but also that's me speculating who knows we're gonna get this really quick i have a poll up uh in both the twitch and youtube chat which is the worst name marvel 1942 or indiana jones in the great circle oh Although, mm. it's easily 1942 at yeah. least, at least you, in indiana the twitch jones. chat 1942 is winning a little bit in the youtube chat bunch of psychopaths insane shit great circle is winning by like it's 65 uh, percent to 35 percent here's here's my thing with indiana jones in the great circle it says indiana jones at least it says yeah, indiana it's, jones it's, and here's the thing it's a bad name compared to the other indiana jones titles yes, yes. that's the only reason but not with marvel 1942 what rise of hydra that? to your point you have captain america and black panther as the main characters in the game yep call the game Captain America and Black Captain, Panther are homies. Ca yeah, <laughs> or not or fight. Captain or Pat, fight. Uh, Cap Call it Captain America versus Black Panther. Yep, <laughs> exactly. that flies off of sales uh -huh. or flies off of shelves. Yeah. Come on, man. Flies off of sales. Okay, it flies off of the sales. <laughs> My favorite thing is when we were talking about the meetings, John Drake, I kept on doing this motion, like he's putting a hundred dollars. Yeah, he's just like a lady. He's like, he's like, oh, like Amy Henning, that's, like, no, that's, 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 that's a great pitch. Here's two hundred. <laughs> the the, the cat <laughs> infinite course is the cap and the cat. I love it. I love it. Yeah, chat. Come up with new names for Marvel. Marvel. This 1943. is why we're not in the boardrooms, everybody. <laughs> this is why uh, John Drake is never going to text me back. Never. never. I'm not texting him in the first place. I should send him a text. He's like, "Hey, what's up, man? I heard D23 is around the corner. <laughs> you want to I did a great out? job last time. I did a great job. I'll be back in. Uh, story number six: Medieval Two Remake reportedly is releasing soon. This is Armina Khan at PlayStation Lifestyle. <laughs> An insider who previously leaked the existence of Gravity Rush 2 PS5 remaster now claims that Medieval 2 Remake is in the works and its release date is sooner than we think. Despite his previous denials, Other Ocean Interactive has reportedly been working on the project since 2021. The leaker happens to be semi-popular Discord member Orangey. Orangi? <laughs> or Semi-popular Discord member is going to be like, <laughs> I want that on my tombstone. <laughs> yeah. Semi-popular Discord member Orangi, awesome. uh, who is allegedly a playtester, which I'm going to come back to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, we can't comment on the authenticity of their claims on their reputation, but they did <laughs> accurately, why are they roasting him in this article? They did accurately leak information pertaining to the Gravity Rush movie in the past. Nevertheless, take this with a grain of salt. According to Orangi, uh, we will see the Medieval 2 remake in May 2024, 
which has led to speculations that it'll be shadow dropped during the rumored PlayStation showcase. Now, there's a lot of like extrapolation going on here. I think it's just fucked up that we live in a world where like Dead I know they're different companies, but Dead Space 2, like, we can't do that remake. Medieval! We could do that one. We're we gonna do, that do a remake easily. for the sequel to that. Hey man, Three different, years. Th- again, different company. PlayStation, man. You know what I mean? Where the fuck is Sly Cooper? Have we had a conversation oh. about that? Where the fuck is Sly Cooper? Where was the movie? Do you remember the movie? I do. I think I watched the trailer. They had a whole trailer for this fucking movie. <laughs> as, what are we doing? Where are we putting Sly Cooper as an IP compared to Medieval? Though? Many, we have no other IP, Raj. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. no. I'm not even going to entertain what you just said. What did you say? I just said, where are we, when we talk about Sly Cooper and we talk about Medieval in terms of IP power, Apparently, PlayStation is picked aside because we got a medieval remake not that long Jim ago. Jim Ryan already. for sure was like a fucking medieval guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that. I yeah. love, it was <laughs> one of three here. games he ever played. I, I love the idea that like <laughs> uh, Jim Ryan, Herman Holst, and Mark Cerny are sitting in a dark room yeah. with like a pentagram in the middle. <laughs> Mac, <laughs> medieval. Yeah. And Astro. they're like, they're like, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna fucking make more medievals, <laughs> and they're gonna like it. We're gonna medieval this shit into it's, existence. It's cool, I guess. I'm happy for medieval fans. I hope this happens for them. Sure, why not? Whatever. But like, what? First of all, I don't understand this guy's deal. I don't. I don't know anything Here, about medieval. I don't know this guy's deal. And also, like, where's Sly Cooper? Those my my, my genuine answer to why we get medievals and we don't get Sly Cooper is that Sly Cooper has too much expectation. <laughs> and like if you make a Sly Cooper, it has to be bigger, like bigger scope and bigger yeah. budget. Medieval, these medieval remakes, like that last medieval remake, that didn't look that crazy. That wasn't like no. blue point. <laughs> like, it wasn't a big budget, big thing, right? I think those are they can treat those as almost like double A um type like yeah. releases and not put as much work into it. Whereas the expectations for Sly Cooper are just so high. That if you're gonna make a new Sly Cooper, you gotta make a, a new you Sly Cooper. You gotta make. You gotta like motherfucker. Yeah. Release the movie. Where's the movie? Where's this movie? I, want that. I was so excited for this I fucking want, movie. I want that Acme movie that sounded awesome. <laughs> yeah. Fucking why not? I'm just so that movie ca- sounded great. I'm just baffled by the the whole. The, they have I a want the back movie. row movie. <laughs> what are we doing? But also, oh, and I didn't want to. Uh, Arangi, you're a you're a play tester, and you're leaking shit. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Don't do that. That's bad. That's bad. It's breaking embargo. Also, oh, breaking the are you a play tester, but also learning about like what the PlayStation movies are. I doubt. I don't think that they're. A play There's a lot of weird, head. yeah, weird things going on in this story. A lot of it doesn't. It doesn't come the together. The weirdest as one much. being Medieval Two is getting a fucking remake. Kevin Coelho was one of ten people who played the first. Yeah, remake. who played this first one? How did they the get first Medieval? Se- yeah, who, how did they get a sequel for that? Well, you're talking about like the like on PS One. No, the remake. No, the remake oh, how is the like, second one getting a remake? I yeah. I baffled that 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 actually happened. That's cr- I mean, good for them. Again, I'm just like they have a wild. team. There's a team at PlayStation that's like, yo, we have the capabilities to make small games, yeah. and they're like, ah, oh, shit, it what sold do we have enough. To do? I guess it was profitable. They're, okay. they're like, oh, I guess having to work on medieval games. Good for y'all. When Dark Cloud is sitting right there, I'm just salty. I'll guys. take a smaller Dark salty. Cloud game. I'm just salty. I just, I just want Sly Cooper, guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to take it out of Mr. Medieval. I'm, and also, I'm, I do. The med- I'm sure the Medieval fans are listening. Sorry, excuse me. I'm sure the, the Medieval fan is listening to this. He's in the room <laughs> with you. Kevin, oh, what yeah, do you Kevin think about a in. Medieval 2 remake? He's just staring at They're me. doing a Medieval 2 remake. Yeah. Oh, he didn't even know, he didn't the, even know the, the original sequel. one out of second He did game. not know the original one out of That's sequel. how deep the, the fandom goes. Jesus Christ. No, we're just talking shit about the other. We're just talking about shit about medieval. So, but yeah, Roger's yeah. sad because he's not getting a Sly Cooper. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Movie. <laughs> uh, Roger, <laughs> we just <laughs> talked about a bunch of big things. Yes, and maybe one smaller thing, yes. medieval. But if I wanted something even smaller, say the tiniest news I need to know about, where would I go? You would go to our last news story, the Wii News Channel, where we cover all the small news items you need to know about. Now it's time for story number seven. That's right. It's Wii News. Ooh. F124 launches May 1st. Sorry, May 31st. It's very oh. important. Two very different dates. Uh, Human, Fall, Human Fall Flat 2 has been delayed to 2026. Wow. Octopath Traveler is back on the eShop. No Rest for the Wicked is out today on PC Early Access. Final Fantasy 16 Rising Tide t- DLC is out today. And then somebody added a link. Who added this link? Oh. What was this? Uh, For Honor is getting an Ezio Auditore skin because wow. what fucking year is it? <laughs> Sick. Incredible stuff. And that's it. For we got news. that. We didn't get Sly Cooper. <laughs> Again, <laughs> different <fuck> Sly Cooper. <laughs> it's easier to put your Ezio skin in a fucking For Honor. Um, is it just a skin? like, can I play as Ezio? Yeah. yeah. It seems like it. Like, but like, not just the skin, but like, is it a character? Am I using his abilities? Because actually, it seems like, it seems like cool. he, had the, he had the little, little thing. 
little that, sneaky, sneaky Yeah, snap. he looks like he's playing like. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, he's got the. He's got, got no, the you're, yeah, it's not just a skin. You're playing as Ezio. Oh, you're playing as the assassin. That's actually really neat. I w I've when you said skin, I thought it was just a cosmetic. I've this is looking, fucking dope. I want to get back into. Oh, I want to play For Honor for the first time. I'll, I'll play with you. I'm down to play For Honor. Fucking let's Red fucking Lobster go. guys, let's do. Let's play For Honor. Let's I'll take your ass to Red Lobster. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep in business. That's it for We News. Now it's time. For the super, we should figure out a transition for the end. No, there. I love the hard cut. So Let me keep the hard cut. I think it's fucking funny. Uh, we got a bunch of super chats for you. Kebabs gives us a super chat and says, Will Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and its sequel pick up once the remake project is complete, or will they continue the downward trend? Sorry, repeat that. This is Final Fantasy. I think he's talking about sales. Will sales of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, or will sales of FS7 Rebirth and its sequel pick up? After the whole thing's finished, is what he, is what they're saying. Oh, are the sales down? Is that what's happening here? Yeah, it's it was like reported like... that the sales is like are down and also like not meeting. Well, actually, sure. I don't know if you said they're not meeting Square Enix's expectations. We can assume that, but yeah, the sales. I are mean, down. I, I, you would assume that by for the last game, they're going to be like, here's a, it's a triple pack or whatever for seventy or eighty dollars or whatever, because like mm -hmm. they did for this one, right, where it's like a dual pack if you pre-ordered the game. Yeah. So I mean, in that sense, sure, but I don't think anyone's. That's what's going to have other sense. I think uh, I'm still convinced that PlayStation has the exclusive rights to this trilogy until the entire thing is out. Mm. And then once that contract is up, then it can go finally to other platforms like Xbox and PC and all that shit. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to put shit. out there is that one, I think by the time we get there and everything's out, I think the year after whatever the third installment is, yeah, it comes to Xbox, it comes to maybe not Switch, but like it'll come to everywhere. But then also, I would think that by the time we get Final Fantasy VII three <laughs> yeah. which is crazy um i think once we get that they put out the playstation 6 version trilogy mm -hmm. final fantasy 7 trilogy playstation 6 yeah i think they put that out and a i think that numbers. sells gangbusters a lot yeah. of numbers but i think that's the ultimate ultimate edition i think that sells gangbusters i think that's the edition that yeah then makes its way to other consoles yeah i think they're gonna find ways to bundle it and um improve everything and like sell it to people that way because i think i don't think if you just put out Final Fantasy VII three, it like all ever goes backwards and everyone yeah, like, like I'm sure sales are gonna bump, but it's sure. not gonna be like it's gonna sell games. No, yeah, put now. it put it in a pack and then make and also for PC too. The rebirth is gonna come out on PC probably in the next year. You assume right? Probably because, yeah. yeah. So that's also gonna boost the numbers because that game sells like gangbusters on PC. So yeah. Street Shadow writes in and says, "Question for Bless: Have you watched Twisted Metal yet? Because if you liked Fallout, Twisted Metal has that fun vibe that pulls on lore in the world. I've not watched Twisted Metal yet. Wait, um, really? Well, I watched the first episode." And I was okay. like, I'm good. <laughs> I, the first episode didn't pull me in as much as I expected I, it to. I don't know why. Like, I just had like, this weird, like, moment where I just could have sworn that you watched all of Twisted no. Metal. And no, it. he was just the biggest fan of it before yeah, it was Yeah, that's out. where it is. Yeah, I'm before it was out, I was like, I was like, y'all, this Twisted Metal show looks good. I never said that I was going to watch the fuck out of it. I'm sure you did. I may. I, may. <laughs> sure I saw that as you said that just now. I saw the doubt in your eyes. I saw the smile. You're like, ah, shit. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was like, no, the Swiss Metal show looks like it could be. I, I said Anthony Mackie is a funny man. I think he's. I think he's a good lead character. I think the premise sounds dope. Like I was talking up the Twisted Metal thing, and then it came out, and it was good. But yeah, I watched the first episode, and I was like, cool. Yep. We'll see if I come back to this, and I didn't. Um, maybe I will before season two or something, but. Yeah, I, I Fallout though is an easier watch for me because I just like I like Fallout a lot. I'm already bought into that world and I've played the games and so Twisted Metal I don't have that same connection with. And so I don't have the same desire to watch the Twisted Metal TV show. But I do like Anthony Mackie. So Yeah. Uh Gonzu writes in and says, I only played Fallout 4 because my cousin who who died by suicide loved Fallout and I don't but all the but I'll give the game another shot uh just for him. Oh, that's sweet. Beautiful. But yeah. yeah, oh that sucks. Rest in peace. Uh, and then Optimus Prime says, 99% sure Todd said in an interview, the show isn't supposed to directly reference the endings of the games, so there is no canon endings to them. Sure. Sure, yeah. I, but I feel like you have to, at a certain point, you have to pick a yeah. canon, right? Like, you have to be like, okay, well, if we're going to make a show that takes place in this location, time has to move. Yeah. And so we have to figure out, like, all right, Not what if you happened? Keep jumping to different locations each time, though. Exactly, right? just all around. Yeah, go to Canada. Like at some point, to go to the East Coast, they got to go to the Capital Wasteland, and we got to see what's up with Megaton. No, we'll just uh, we'll, or we'll Megaton. Go, we'll go more south. See what's up with Megatron? <laughs> what's up with Megatron? What's we'll, up with Megatron, everybody? We'll, we'll, we'll go on the East Coast, but like south. You know, we're going to Florida, <laughs> hanging like, out in Miami. Where's Rick Ross? Yeah, maybe Miami. Uh, too close to GTA, but like maybe. Um, 
New Orleans would might be a good spot for oh. Fallout if they haven't done that in a DLC. New Orleans Fallout would be said that well people wanted that. If you remember Fallout Four leading up to it, people were speculating New Orleans. I don't remember that because it was ten years ago. Yeah, I I remember Let's it. Let's go to a different country. Fuck it. I don't. I feel like other countries don't exist in Fallout except for China. <laughs> like China is the only other country that exists. Other than that, they don't talk about other countries at all. Let's go to another country. Here's my here's my Fallout here's Trinidad. my thing. <laughs> Because I mentioned Miami and Florida. Niche niche. I would bet money Miami or um, Florida as a whole just doesn't exist anymore <laughs> in the fall. Broken off. I think Florida like nuked itself or something. Like <laughs> I think Florida is fucking gone <laughs> in the fall. It's all irradiated. Like it's not uh, habitable. Like Florida yeah. seems like kind of place where it's nah, man. After the nukes dropped, like everybody in Florida just took it, took each other out. It was yeah. it was too too busy down no. there. Um, but yeah, I'm down to see other countries. I'm down to see um, new locations and Fallout. And that's it for the super wow. chats. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. We write in. Let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. We so we can credit wrong. for those watching we later on YouTube wrong. and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Nitro writes in and says Final Fantasy VII Remake is on PC, which is not what we're talking about. That's not, not what we said. That's about. not what we said. We said. I was saying that the sequel is going to be on said PC. Rebirth. We're talking about Rebirth. I miss, no, I think they're correcting me. I think I misspoke at some point. Oh, gotcha. I heard, I, when you were talking, I heard, I heard you was like Rebirth. Yeah. Talking about is this next one gonna be on PC? But yeah, well. Um Impossibilium says added context for Warhammer games. The IP owners are very loose <laughs> with who they license Warhammer games to. So there are a lot of developers and publishers that make Warhammer games across numerous games or numerous genres. Uh that's why there's a high quantity of Warhammer uh in varying quality. Cool. Uh Razio says John Drake works for Disney games, not Marvel games. I still imagine him in the rooms, though. Yeah. I think he's still in the rooms. He might not be the guy that's hand like... in the hundreds. He might not be the one guy hand in the hundreds, but I think, like, the... Um, is it Bill that's, a, that's a Marvel Games? It might be Bill. Um, but I think whoever is like the Marvel Games person looks over at John and is like, yo, and John gives him the nod, and then Bill starts putting yeah. out the fucking Bill. <laughs> Put putting the 20s on the table. <laughs> what is it for? I don't know. I think it's just parking. <laughs> yeah. yeah this is so we, you don't, can... we don't validate parking, but here it is, man. Here's a few 20s. Yeah, Bill Roseman is the VP and creative director at Marvel Games. So yeah, I think Bill is putting down the bills <laughs> for yeah, like yeah, Bi- when they're at his desk and they're like, "Yo, Marvel 1943." I love that. Two Marvels, <laughs> Rise of Hydro 1942, Captain Panther, <laughs> and the um, and the open world Black Panther game. Right, I'm sure he he hears that and he's like, Bang. "Boom, Bang. hundreds." Sly Cooper takes the money off the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's like who comes through <laughs> stealthily steals it. Yeah. He's like, I'll take that. Uh, Nitro writes in and says, Marvel 1943, Rise of Hydra is coming. See, okay, I'm okay, getting to well, the bottom of this. <laughs> I'm getting to the bottom of this. Is it 42 or 43? Y'all, it's 1943. I got it right the first time. Damn. Y'all had me confused this entire episode. I got it right. You're wrong yourself, chat. And well, it's Barrett that well, got, no, that's I got me it wrong. Again. No. Fuck. Yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm a fucking idiot today. I'm sorry. Barrett, like on. most days. Fuck. But yeah, Marvel 1943, Rise of Hydra well, is coming. Let's continue to like gaslight Blessing into thinking it's actually 42. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, it's coming 2025, according to the most recent trailer. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Did it say 2025? Yeah. Oh, shit. Then my bad. Again, I take that back. I thought we were also speculating on the open world Black Panther game of like that game is probably not coming for. Well, no, I said both. Uh, I, I was, I was saying. And then I would say that this, uh, this Black Panther open world game is 2027. I could buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kebab says it was recently confirmed that the trailer for the Sly Cooper movie wasn't a trailer. It was an internal concept video meant to pitch what the movie would be like. The movie was canceled after the failure of the Ratchet and Clank movie in 2016. Fucking, but the movie be- made the game. So then if you make the movie, you make another game. And then Tedra Boy says that. the locusts from Gears are not aliens. They're actually a race of genetically altered humans that established their civilization. He said aliens from the ground. Shut the fuck up. It's the same thing. In this game, they're aliens the to humans. <laughs> they're aliens to humans. <laughs> defend the planet from alien invasion. Remember, those, those used, to, used to be my examples and all the the messy mashups. Yeah. When you don't play Gears, they seem like aliens. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. And I played all the Gears. They're aliens. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's also, just... apparently, that's a spoiler, but it's a spoiler for a game that came out in 20, 2008, and so you're fine. If you haven't played the Gears, if you haven't played Gears 1 by now, 
Oh, it's from five? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's from five? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I never finished five either, so that's a spoiler for me. Okay. Oh, shit. Well, actually, holy shit. Oh, wow. That's like, I managed to finish that fucking game. <laughs> that brings us I got stuck end. on the ice planet. We gotta get out of here, Roger. We gotta get out. They're getting mad in the chat. Well, that's it for Kind of Funny Games Daily. Of course, each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe if you love what we do support us with the kind of funny membership on patreon or youtube to get all of our shows ad free watch score them live and get a daily <laughs> exclusive show until next time game daily <laughs>